Okay, good evening everyone at, what time is it? 7.03, I will open tonight's meeting of the Lunenburg Select Board and ask everyone to please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you. Okay, formalities first. In accordance with the requirements of the opening meeting law, please be advised that this meeting is being recorded and broadcast live over the Lunenburg Public Access Channel on Facebook Live on the Public Access Facebook page and will be uploaded to the Lunenburg Access YouTube page within 24 hours after the conclusion of the meeting. If you have a computer, a smartphone, or a tablet, and you would like to participate in tonight's meeting, you can do so via the Zoom app or Zoom application. This evening's webinar ID is 909-174-0347. If you don't have any of those devices but have access to a phone and would like to participate via phone, you can do so by dialing toll-free 888-475-4499, and once again, the webinar ID is 909-174-0347. The posted agenda lists all the topics which may be discussed at the meeting and are those reasonably anticipated by the chair. Votes may be taken as a result of these discussions. Not all items listed may in fact be discussed and other items not listed may also be brought up for discussion to the extent permitted by the open meeting law. Okay, formalities out of the way. I will ask if there's any public comment from the board this evening. I have none. Nope. None. Any public comment from the public? None. Any announcements? Uh, so town meeting is May 7th at the Middle School High School at 9 a.m. And um, we will be utilizing the electronic voting clickers, and those will be distributed through the town clerk and her election workers. And um, also, I just want to announce some um, road closures as well. Lancaster Ave will be closed between Goodrich Street and Lemonster Shirley Road on Wednesday, uh, April 27th, between the hours of 8 a.m. and 2 p.m. And this is due to um, crane needing to come in to a residence to bring a tight tank in. So the road needs to be closed for that during that time. And Townsend Harbor Road will be paved on Wednesday, the 27th and the 28th. So expect delays on that road as well, because it'll be down to one lane. Now, Lancaster Ave is closed tomorrow, not one lane. It's just closed. Closed during those right. hours. Right, but Townsend Harbor Road is just going to be down to one lane while they do the right. repaving. Okay, mm -hmm. just want to make sure. Any other announcements? So since you're talking about dates, so the town meeting is May 7th, and of course the annual town election is May 21st. So just be aware that polling place will be at the uh, TC Pasios building as always that Saturday. Okay. Any appointments? No appointments. Okay. Next, ratification of the town manager's appointment of seasonal lifeguards. Uh, Ian Laundry and Mason Bowser. So uh, these are two lifeguards that worked last year at the town beach. So I'm asking for their appointment for this year's upcoming mm -hmm. beach season as well. I would entertain a motion regarding the ratification of the town manager's appointments of the seasonal lifeguards as listed Ian Laundry and Mason Bowser. Move to approve. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Uh, well, we're talking about appointments and reappointments, so if you are interested, uh, is it part of your town manager report I to do, do the vacancies? Have one tonight, uh, town manager. Oh, okay. Well, then it's probably not part of your report <laughs> then. Uh, so let me just say that there are annual appointments. For this is the list I was given from the architect. So these are I'm just going to announce the the body, the municipal body that has uh, openings, and some of them 
the incumbents may be running for re-election or reappointment, I should say. So on the Architectural Preservation District, there's one Historical Commission representative, term to expire June 30th, 2024. The Agricultural Commission, there are three members, term to expire on June 30th, 2025, and one associate member whose term will expire June 30th, 2024. On the Conservation Commission, there are three members whose term are, will, will expire June 30th, 2025. Council on Aging has five members, terms to expire June 30th, 2025. Council, Cultural Council, one member, term to expire June 30th, 2025. Green Communities Committee, um, two members for a three-year term to expire on 2025, and two associates, terms to expire on June 30th, 2024. Historical Commission has two members, the term will expire on June 30th, 2025. Personnel Committee, two members, term to expire June 30th, 2025. Two members of the Zoning Board of Appeals, terms to expire June 30th, 2027. And two associate members of the ZBA, Zoning Board of Appeals, term to expire June 30th, 2025. So if you are interested in any of those positions, again, some of the, the incumbents are looking to be reappointed. Um, so be aware of that. But if you're interested, please fill out a talent bank form and return it. And you can download it and email it. You can download it, print on it, and bring it back to the selectman's office, however you see fit to get it to us to be considered. Uh, on the issue of appointments on the Council on Aging, uh, I was approached by the Council on Aging chair who has made the final following request. Several years ago, they had many members that had either uh, resigned, not wanted reappointment and everything. And as you all are aware, we try to have an equal, as equal number as possible, members up for reappointment each year to make it more even. Well, they've gotten a position because of that event. And when we appointed everybody together, we didn't stipulate between terms. So this year, they have five members. And what they are looking for is go back to their 344. So they wanted to know if it was okay with this board, who was their appointing body, if of the five members, four of them will expire on 2025, and then one of them will expire 2024 to be a two-year term that will put everything back on a 344 schedule. So I said I would pose that to the board if anybody has any objections. No objection. No objection. <clears throat> All right, so let's make sure that uh, we let the Council on Aging know that that, that is fine. That, um, one of the members who's up for reappointment will take a two-year term just to get that back on schedule. I would say that member should resign from that um, to be appointed to that other term one, though, to make it clean. Yeah, yeah. Well, they're gonna mm -hmm. they'll they'll pose a slate to us for that. Uh, you know what? I'll talk with her. I'll talk with her. You don't have to do it, and I'll just let let her know that when they give us the slate, let us know who's up for what. Is that? Yeah. Okay. I, I didn't know if I was making more of a problem than solving. So, okay. Discussion of the draft commemorative policy. So, does everybody, did everybody get a chance to review it? I didn't get any emails from anybody having any uh, additions, comments, or anything. I personally was fine with it. We do have one thing to fill in on the expected life cycle, the second bullet point. We have a public safety or blank years, so we have to. We should probably fill in that, the number of years. So, if it's a tree or other plantings that were commemorative in nature, will be considered at the end of their life cycle. If the tree or planting has outgrown the original location due to size and interfering with public safety, or X years old, whichever come, whichever occurs first. Now, Mr. Franco, you had brought up at a previous meeting that, yeah, if we have an o'clock and it's ending, we're not going out and cutting the tree down. Yeah, right, right, It's right. just a factor in determining it. No, so no, yeah, I didn't expect that that would be the case. No, no, I just yeah, wanted to yeah, clarify yeah, the yes, public. Yes, yes, yeah, that was where the, my bug was, what, what, just picking what that number of years was going to be. Right. You know? So does anybody have any proposition of what they would like that number of years to be? Well, it's a tree, so... 50. Ooh. <laughs> that, would, that would be long. That would be longer than I thought. 
I'm thinking, thinking half of that. Yeah, that, that's, that's what I was thinking. I was thinking exactly the same thing. I was thinking 25. I was thinking less than that, so 25 works. I can live with that. Yep. 25? Yeah. The tree okay, we're putting in 25. <laughs> Uh, as long as we don't plant a sequoia, I guess <laughs> we're okay. Or an oak or sugar maple. Yeah. <laughs> and again, it's that's like that's just a factor. Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, it can be cut down in five years if it interferes. Right. Well, if something. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or if, if it gets hit by lightning and yeah. splits in half or whatever. Yeah. Um. Okay. So then, if there are no other objections to this or no other modifications, then we should. Vote on this tonight. Oh, I see no reason why we shouldn't vote on this tonight. Let's put it that way. I have, I have a question, though. Yes. Um, so one of the things that I know that we had talked about um, that there was discussion about previously was something to do with naming things after people. Um, did we want to use this as an opportunity to, I guess, more to address that fully, or is that a would you recommend that be a future discussion? Uh, good question. I, I mean, I guess I could, I could see how it would fall under this. I could see how we could adopt this and just amend it later on because yep. we have this. Well, it could be another policy. I mean, does anybody have any feelings one way or another? I appreciate Mr. Jeffrey's point, but I, I, don't, I don't know how we resolve that quickly tonight unless you wanted to, to talk to it for a minute or two. Like what no, no, I, I, it was just, I don't have a solution tonight. I mean, I think that the policy as, as it is, I'm okay with in implementing so that way it could be an amendment at a future point or a second policy, but I do think we, we need to probably address at, you know, how we name things yeah. after people and if we should be doing that and if we want to put time limits on, on that yeah, stuff. That kind of. In some, some regards, the cat is out of the bag, but I, I'm, I'm with you. I, I think I voted against naming every, anything after a person ever since I've been on here. So. Yeah. Okay. But we can, so we can address that, you know. It, Madam Town Manager, it, in, first of all, do you know of another municipality that has that? And is it, would it be under here? Uh, I would have to look into okay. that one. All right, so you, on, on yeah, that. Okay. I can't think of yeah, an example of it okay. that's come across my desk. Yeah, probably name, it would probably be a separate policy, probably be easier, but okay. I'm, I'm fine with it wherever it goes. And does, uh, the school has a policy, then, don't they? Well, now they do, I think, yeah. yes. Yeah, we could look at the school's policy. Yeah. That's a good point. Okay. I tend to agree. I think it should be a separate policy. I mean, I think that this one is very, you know, narrow and it's, it's, you know, right. things that are, are items that have been, you know, commemorative items, benches, trees, things like that. And I think the naming policy would be best addressed as a standalone. Okay. All right. Who is the, who is our, I should know this, but who is our school committee representative liaison? Oh, I don't. Can you, can yep. you contact the school committee and sure. just ask them if they can provide that policy? Yep. At least for the next four weeks I am. I mean, I'm up for, you know, someone else well, that's, taking that's, that over. You've been like doing <laughs> such, I, understand, I understand in the lawyer's world, four weeks goes down like that. You can, you can usually, you know, file extensions and just <laughs> eat up that time. Right. I think you're on the permanent hook, Lou. <laughs> All right, so let's uh, let's take a vote on, or I obtain a motion on the commemorative policy as distributed and written, and with the addition of that uh, those twenty five years. I move to uh, I move to approve the commemorative policy as presented and discussed. I have a second. second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Aye. None. Okay, uh, so this was back on today, but uh, this was the foreclosed policy, the properties. But as we have determined from last time we met two weeks ago, we obviously have a while to discuss this unless, unless people are ready to vote on it here. So I will leave it up to the board if an questions that they had were answered, if there have not been, or there are other things that are hinging on this, then we will bypass it till further notice. 
I prefer to bypass. Okay. All right. Let's put this back on. Just so we know. So what are you looking for? So we know when to bring this back up. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I think... I think that it would be, first, I did look into these properties, and I do understand why the conservation, it seems pretty clear to me, why the Conservation Commission is requesting for these properties to be uh, reassigned to them. I think that since, you know, this has to go before a town meeting to get approved, and the next one is going to likely be in November, I think that we have some time to just discuss between now and then, kind of just to, to do a review of all of our properties, and, you know, there may be more that... Uh, may fit into this category, but I'd rather there be a systemic kind of process that we engage in, in which just as the Conservation Commission and is looking at, you know, longevity of the town, that we also take an approach to look at some of our parcels to see if any can be designated for future use um, for the municipal purposes or if they would be better served in some form of a chapter but held by residential um, owners rather than by the town so that way we can continue to collect revenue. So I, I mean, I, I'm not opposed to any of these properties going there. Uh, I just think that I would like to do it as part of a larger process. And I think that we have enough time over the summer to get there. Now, I'm just asking because I want to know when to put it on. I don't want to put it on just to keep going over. So didn't the, so hold on one second. Yeah. Did the open space committee review all the town properties that we had? That's, I'm just looking to start as an inventory. Don't we have an inventory? Mm -hmm. But so. as part of the open space plan. Okay, but do we have an open, do we have an inventory of all town-owned property? Yes. Okay, so if we can get that list to us, so that because that's what you want to review, you're saying, right? We have the list. I think that there's another part of that which is also like the map, but I know that that's still in process and it's going to take a little bit more more yeah. time. Okay, how many properties? I, I don't recall the list. Oh, oh we okay. have a lot. <laughs> we have a lot of property. A lot, like a yeah. hundred. Yeah. Uh, I would say with between conservation, parks, town, school, yeah. Okay, that's a lot. All right. So let's postpone this till you know, end of, let's say, beginning of the next fiscal year, in July. Okay. We'll revisit it. Yeah, I just want to add, if I could. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, well, I'm sorry. I oh, thought yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. No. Yeah. One of the things I I wanted to add is that when we were view these properties, one of the things I would like to see provided this select board are things like, you know, for example, if it's a, an air, uh, a piece of property with wetlands on it or any restrictions that are currently under mass general law, because I don't imagine that these properties have wetlands on them. I don't imagine there's going to be a radical reimagining of the Wetlands Protection Act to, to decrease the amount of protection these lands have. I can only see it increasing. So if you're on a property like many of these are that are essentially swamp they're already protected they can't be developed anyway without a special you know waiver from the conservation commission or something like that so you know i i'd be i don't know the point of turning it over to the conservation commission if it's already protected so having that information at our fingertips when we look at it say oh you know it's it's within a a, a you know 100 feet of a you know the the buffer zone of a wetland the whole property. What's the point? It's already protected. Why? Why that information is valuable versus if it's upland and developable, developable. Right. You know that that is also valuable information for us to have. Well, I think that one of the things, and I don't want to speak on behalf of the Conservation Commission, but the chair, you know, when it came on the Zoom when we were discussing this at our last meeting, and one of the things he says because if it's under there, they have established policies of the use. So yeah, I understand your point about developability and everything, but. If the town owns it, then there's no, you know, there's no regulations. There's nothing regulating what people can. Right, and can't but the do Wetlands on. Protection Act does regulate activities within the buffer zone and what people can do within that area. And if they want to do something that uh, within that, they have to go before the commission anyway. If it becomes privately owned. Okay. And well, frankly, the town, if we want to do something there, we have to go before the Conservation Commission as well. So if it's already in a uh, jurisdictional area. Uh, then I, I think, you know, if it's already protected, why do we need to, you know, have the Conservation Commission or any other board uh, or, or commission uh, control an agricultural uh, commission? I, I, I don't like have that. a ready answer. I'm, I'm right. Well, you were on the Conservation Commission. Right, but commission, it, it's so. that sort of information that's helpful to us. Well, I agree that the information is absolutely helpful. So I, I'll split my answer into two. To your point that I wish we had had that, yeah, I think anything we do, anything that comes before us, the more information that we can get, 
the right. easier it is to make a decision. I mean, so essentially, I we, we were giving the, the assessor's map with just a uh, plot plan without any, right. you know, we had to look it up on Google Maps during the meeting, figure out where it was, what water bodies were there. and that Well, the map showed it was wetlands, if I remember correctly. It had the symbol for the, the wetlands. Yeah. 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 But, but you're right. I mean, sometimes it's not obvious, and sometimes they right. just give us a, a drawn map with no symbols on it. I agree. And it's not like we live in the biggest town of the world. I mean, there are, you know, finite number of parcels in the town, and it's not in the, you know, hundreds of thousands. It's like, you know, in the 10, 10 or 20,000. So, <clears throat> it has to have some interactive, you know, easy interactive that's always available at this meeting in this room somehow, but uh, that's a wish list that we can come through <laughs> another time. Uh, okay, so we'll put that on, and yes, the, Mr. Franco, you had a yeah, either these were modified to include the acreages or I just didn't notice them last time, but that's information I'm always going to want to. Even if it's just land even if it's landlocked, has no other purpose and it's a swamp, just for purposes of completeness, I'll always want the yeah. the acreage. And we should also want the valuation because I mean, Mr. Jeffries asked last time how much are they bring in and it would be good to know what do they bring in? What are they valued at? So, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> We can sell some swamp land to someone and make some money off of it. <laughs> this is Glen Gary, Glen Ross. <laughs> All right. There's Pete in the bottom of it. Could be worth something. <laughs> uh, okay. Discussion of fiscal year 2023 budget, capital plan, financial forecast, annual town meeting warrant, articles, including updates or votes of recommendations, and the consent calendar. So let's take them one at a time. Anybody have any questions? Any updates on the budget? Any questions about the budget? No. Capital plan. I just want to give a heads up that uh, the, the, it's been a big discussion at the Finance Committee. Uh, it's, I don't want to say solely, but especially promoted by the Finance Committee Chair. But I'm assuming, I mean, is, is there, as I don't know if you can speak to this, Mr. Passios, but uh, it, was it a taken as a vote of the board or has it just been an open discussion? about the capital plan and what amendments can and cannot be made at the town meeting. Dave Passios, 56 Whiting Street, and also a member of the Finance Committee. Um, I, I think I can dare say uh, that the committee is not in full agreement uh, with the questions that have been brought up okay. uh, and at this point have voted to defer to town meeting on any decision. That may change Thursday evening. Yep. So that is a big agenda item for them, and they had requested from town council an opinion on what is or isn't in order as far as amendments to the capital plan. And the town council, in, in a nutshell, I won't read the, I won't read the whole opinion. But you can get that uh, from the town manager. Uh, but basically, it is that you could the town meeting can certainly adjust the dollar amount uh, of the budget because that in their legislative capacity but he it was in his opinion that he, they couldn't reach down and say we don't want this item or that item like they couldn't pick out items to the money would be spent on they could reduce the amount to anything they saw fit but they couldn't dictate what would be purchased with that and that is I guess a, a point of contention that the finance committee has the chair of the finance committee will be meeting with the, our town council's uh, uh, town hours tomorrow. I will be in that meeting just to hear, you know, firsthand what the discussion is. I mean, the, the, the town council's opinion was the town council's opinion that they asked for, and uh, I guess I'll hear what that is. But that's going to be a discussion at the finance committee meeting on Thursday. If you're looking for it, I forwarded it to the whole board on April 12th. So I will report back uh, on Tuesday. Uh, any questions about financial forecast? Annual town meeting warrant articles. Do we have any um, more information about the article on the state flag? Uh, we did get an email, and I don't know if it was from the proponent who had the citizen who sent around the petition, but somebody interested in that article 
saying, you know, I think they asked how they could present information and the town manager responded that you can come here and, and they were, they indicated that they didn't feel comfortable coming in person because of the pandemic and they were told that oh, well, you can join by Zoom, but we have not heard back from them since. And we, they also were told that at town meeting, you have to be there in person. There is no Zoom part of voting or participating in annual town meeting. But I have not heard any word from them since. That was last week. Right. And I, yeah, I just let them know that we have public comment at the beginning and the end of our meetings, as does finance at their meetings, and how to get the link to our agenda. So. Has there been any, um, has there been any from the, I don't know who submitted the article, the citizen petition for it, but um, I'm assuming that you just mentioned that, are, that they're aware that they need to present this at town meeting. Do we expect that, is there, has there been follow up from them or is it just? No follow up, but we'll be doing that before town meeting to make sure okay. that, that someone, um, if it's not a resident, then they would have to be recognized by the moderator. Yeah, I, I, I guess I wasn't asking about us as much as them, if, as far as have they reached out to try to present this to the town or any other kind of way other than just a warrant on? Right, no. No, okay, thank you. And just to be clear, it's not a requirement yeah. that they present it, but obviously since this is going to catch people's attention saying, I don't understand this, um, and they're gonna want an explanation beside what's in the article. Mm -hmm. And what's in the article, if you go to the, the web page of, of the governor's council investigating this, it's basically exactly what's in that citizen petition. So it's like I didn't learn anything more from there either. So, okay. <clears throat> Thank you. No problem. Consent calendar. Okay. Uh, okay, so we have a discussion on the select board goal. So we're, we have two, three goals. Mm -hmm. One of them is 30 School Street, which is, you know, in progress. And we have an article on town meeting for uh, the teardown and for funds to finalize the engineering for, the, uh, for that project. Uh, the second one is the senior tax abatement that uh, Mr. Franco and I uh, reported back that we are working on and we're waiting. In fact, we did get some information back from the, our assessor, uh, principal assessor, so we'll be scheduling a meeting with that, so that will be in progress. So the only other goal we had was how to encourage volunteerism uh, for involvement in town, whether it's elected, appointed bodies, or whether it's, you know, trying to, and, and any kind of volunteerism, trying to set up, you know, on Earth Day, trash pickup along side road, whatever, how do we encourage that, and how do we potentially do a better job? This was uh, a goal that was put on when we, at the beginning of the, you know, fiscal year, so we had not really discussed it, and so we figured, because this was a lighter meeting that we, you know, as far as agenda, that we would talk about. So the discussion is open. <clears throat> uh, it's like Lou was Did, to say something. Well, no, I'm trying. Yeah, well, it's unrelated. I'm trying to I figure. Can't get it to I'm trying to figure out if the Wi-Fi crapped out. No, yeah. I, it did it. <laughs> did it? <laughs> okay. Yep. Because yep, I can't get it to open either. Yeah. yeah. So. Um. So. If, if I don't know that way, I just I, nothing. I was fumbling trying to get the thing, the document open. Yeah. So I don't have. Go ahead if you have something of substance. Yeah, so on, I'll go to the last thing that you mentioned about the uh, kind of the town-wide stuff. This is, a hard, this is a hard goal. And I know that we've had a lot of discussions about like, you know, I can think of, of the, the times when many residents from Lake Shirley showed up here. And it's like, you know, I, I have this feeling that when residents think that something is going wrong, that they're gonna show up and tell us. Um, and I don't, and I think that we've been very open to that happening, and and you know certainly I don't think I don't think that we've ever put up a barrier to residents of, of them not coming forward and presenting their concerns. We get the emails, you know, uh, throughout the month. Not everyone's happy with what we do. Um, we certainly get those, and some people are. So I, I get this feeling that on the side of do people trust that they can come here and discuss their concerns with us and get. To a better result, I, I I think the answer to that question is yes for the most part. Um, but how do you get people to, you know, leave their habits and want to step up? That's hard because normally 
it's it seems as if like most of us who are engaged are something bad happens <laughs> that then triggers us to say wait a minute i mean that's usually i think the case for a lot of us of what gets us engaged and so so part of this i feel like you know some of this is just going to be tough because there's town politics there's state politics there's federal politics people have churches they have their jobs they have and so you know we're competing for a lot of attention and then everyone's on their phone which is eating up hours of everyone's day you know the other side of this is you know i did every year i do the cleanup uh, uh, on earth day or around earth day down mass ave and i don't and i don't do you know the whole hill i just do my side of the hill and I mean, this year, last year, I did five, I think we got five or six, like, residential trash bags. Five or six last year. So this year, I'm like, I'm going to get two construction bags, and I'm going to be done. <laughs> I filled up two full construction bags of trash from about a 100-yard stretch of Mass Ave, just one side of the road. You know, like... But I, I know that as I was doing it, many people were slowing down. They were, they were clearly watching. And then throughout the day, I noticed over the weekend that a lot of other people were doing it too. And I'm not saying it had anything to do with me. But I think that as people see other people doing it, that that is a motivator. You know? And so some stuff like that, I think that there was even a comment I read on social media of someone that said, I've been trying to get... Earth Day townwide cleanup going for years and don't know what to do to get it going or something something to that effect, and I don't usually respond on social media and I didn't uh, respond on social media, but of course all I can think of is like well like <laughs> how do we facilitate this you know anyway so my opinion is maybe there's there certainly seems to be concrete things we can do for Earth Day, but really I mean I think that with all the requirements that are on us that. I don't have capacity. I really want this to happen, but I'm really looking for a resident to step up and really take point. So, so my comment on this is, is I think one of the ways that we could promote volunteerism is to maybe consider an event, an event or two that could draw people where we could get in front of residents to, you know, have a face to face of, of, you know, asking, hey, do you want to come volunteer for the town? Here's the things you can do. So from my own personal experience, the way I got involved in, in volunteering in the town is it was the last bonfire that we had at the, at the old high school because there was booths everywhere. You'd walk around. It was like a, a, a fair or something like that. And the town had a booth for with uh, talent bank forms and said, hey, fill out a talent bank form. I got a call the next week and said, hey, do you want to be on join the Conservation Commission? Okay. So, but things like that, if we can come up with ways to, to draw people out and, you know, family-friendly events that draw people out. If, if the kids go there, the adults are going to be there, then you can get in front of them and, 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 and we can make our pitch that, you know, it, it's worth it to, to volunteer for the town. Uh, what those events are, I don't know, we, we, we have some in town already, but, you know, this is where we can engage people like the Cultural Council and things like that to try and come up with these events that can draw people in. And then maybe that helps promote volunteerism in the town. That's just, you know, one thought. Yeah, we have done those those booths you know, for several years, and yeah. you know, when they had when we had the fair, well, not only the bonfire, then we had the fair at the Stillman Farm. There were booths there every year that, you know, different people manned. You know, I did some time there, and I know the previous members uh, of other bodies. You know, the select board sewer commission you know took rounds and try to get people in can we can we hijack a table at, at the uh, farmer's market that sure gives us you know something like that we don't have to hijack it we can actually bring our right. own <laughs> things like that you're not selling this corn <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean that would be helpful that's Hello? a good idea yeah, I mean, I think that's a great idea. Uh, also, you know, can an I mean, can an announcement be made? At, of course, those people are already captive. They're they're already involved. But you know, town meeting, uh, maybe pieces in the ledger once in a while. Social media, put put the word out on, on the various pages. I know Chris Menard has has been pretty good at doing yeah. that in the past. And, yes. You know, and I think that since the town manager put it up has been putting it on i think we've we've really closed the loop i think we have you know very few, very few openings now for those for those things uh 
you know, I, I think it was a, I think it was a Massachusetts native, uh, Tip O'Neill, who said that you know all politics is local. Well, even that's not even true anymore. It's like all all participation is like micro local, like like Mr. Jeffries said when when there's an issue at one of the lakes. There's no problem with people coming here from that neighborhood or that group, or if it's something with the library, you know, then the people who really use the library come in, or the, you know. But to get people in general, it's uh, you know, I'm sure there's a whole list of things. You you listed a lot of them, you know. Most of it is time, probably. You know, I want to spend time with my family, but I'm working, and I have to take. My kids are involved, especially if they have children. Their kids are involved in different activities. And, you know, it's just not, I work out of town, and so I'm commuting. I don't know. I, my, the biggest frustration has been in my public service has been exactly this, is that why can't we get more people? Why is there an election that's going to go on on May 21st, and there's not one contested seat? You know, I'm, 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 I think contested seats are good, they're healthy, and, but... You know, we have them less and less, and you know, we can't even fill all the all the seats that are going to be open when we're running. You know, there was a planning board seat still that nobody's running for that I, at least to the last of my knowledge, I don't think anybody took out papers yeah. for that. So I don't know. I mean, we we decided to put this on here, and um, there's no magic bullet, that's for sure. Right. Yeah, it's probably not. Yeah, exactly. There is no magic bullet. It's probably, uh, uh, you know, just various avenues, yep. you know, and, and, and consistency and bombardment and carpet bombing of, of, with the information, essentially. <laughs> so. uh, imagery has been disturbed. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one of the things we ask is that people, if you serve, that talk to your friends and everything. The problem is that the same people serve on many things. So you have a circle that circle of people who are involved in the town all know each other. So you, you run out of people to ask. Yeah. Because <laughs> the people you would ask are all kind of involved already. Or they've been involved for 10 years and they're like, you know, it's hard to approach somebody who said, you know, I did 10 years somewhere. I, I, I'm not, I did my time. I need some time for somebody else to step up. So. Yeah. Well, if you are listening out there and you have ideas about how to get people more involved, and how to get them to volunteer for things. I mean, it's all for a good cause. It's for our community. It doesn't go outside of that. Please, you know, send in your suggestions and send them into the, uh, the town's email, each of the board members, the town manager, or, you know, drop us a line in person or something. My, my phone number is listed and uh, several other members, I think, are maybe listed. But I'm always willing to listen to, you know, people who can get other people involved because I think the more people that are involved, the more representative the whole community is, and I think we make better decisions that way. One thing as well that, you know, um, my assistant is, a, uh, is on the Zoning Board of Appeals in his community, and he told me that he makes $250 a meeting, per meeting, and I'm like, what? And, uh, and I'm like, does every elected official get paid? And, uh, and he said, yes. Now, I'm not a big fan of elected officials getting paid in towns. I think that it's what keeps our system pure, is that the people who are here want to be here, that there's no other motivation other than the goodness of people's hearts. You know, but if we continue to struggle on certain boards, I think that it may be a worthwhile venture to look into, do we want to assign compensation to some of the elected roles? Uh, not that, again, not that I'm a big fan of that, but typically you bring money into an equation and people tend to find a reason to get involved. Um, because it's, it may not be advantageous to them to step up, but if it's $300 going to your kid's car payment, you know, in the course of a month, then that may be enough to motivate someone to participate. So no one's going to get rich, but if it can, you know, have some kind of impact on you know, a couple of bucks. That if we can, if this continues to get worse, I guess is what I'm saying is that may be something viable to work to look into. I would remain opposed to this board being paid, but I think some of them maybe should be. Two fifty a meeting. What town is he in? He's in. Uh, and how's the housing? <laughs> 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 he's in. Uh, what town is he in? Is it Westboro? So he's oh, in a city. Okay. All right. 
Uh, I mean, if not compensation in that form, I mean, maybe just a really good buffet once in a while. (laughs) (laughs) Ain't enough to motivate me. I'm already motivated by food, as you can clearly tell. Well, there is the uh, Senior Center's 55th anniversary coming up that you can go to on June 13th. Okay, I'll make a note. Now, annually, we have had a volunteer... I'd be happy to support that. You know, recognition at the Senior Center annually. There was only one year that I remember that that the board... Really? Mm -hmm. One year? Well, one year since you've been been here. here. Well, we should... I think, well, we didn't do a ton. Certainly, we haven't done it the last two years because of the Can pandemic. We should resurrect that again because that's a very good thing to recognize people who are doing it. So, if we can work with Sue and see if, you know, after the town meeting and after the election, we can have that appreciation. Because it's good at the end of the year before people get reappointed. Mm-hmm. So, was that, excuse me, uh, uh, Madam Town Manager, was the, was the was that May thirteenth or June thirteenth? June, it's Flag Day, so that is June fourteenth. Really. June fourteenth. June fourteenth. June fourteenth. That's yeah. a Tuesday. Flag Day. Flag Day. What day of the calendar year that is just flows off everybody's tongue? Mm-hmm. Flag Day. Flag Day. <laughs> is that a Tuesday this year? It right. is. It's it's yep. also my birthday. Oh, oh. it's also Donald Trump's it's your birthday. birthday. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> So that's at noon. <laughs> so every every year you're celebrating you're celebrating Trump. Oh, it, when he was elected, my father loved to tell me that he just no oh, guess who's else else's <laughs> birthday it is. Uh, <laughs> exercising full restraint. <laughs> okay. Uh, next we have. I love. I just loved saying this because it means absolutely nothing to me. Draft tailings policy. These, <laughs> if they can pick out three words out of a hat that I can put together, <laughs> draft tailings policy, which is not at all the description does not meet what it is. So. No. No. So, can you explain this to us in the financials? I know what it is. Yes. So basically, um, uncashed checks that. Um, uncashed checks of hours that we write. Right, so uncashed checks that we send to people. Mm. No. Or the uncashed checks that. Well, well there's both. For. Okay, why would we have uncashed checks? That Sorry. people give to us. Um, because oh, that were issued. Um, I'm sorry. This came up in, in our. Um, in in our audit. So they're checks that were either reissued, lost, or are being held. For disbursements and expenditures of outstanding checks. So. So, so I understand better. So the intent is that, you know, any check that's written that's more than 90 days old will then that's not cashed, it will be looked into why it hasn't been cashed, and then within 180 days, then it will be canceled. Correct. Okay. Yeah. But so those are checks that we are issuing, that's what I'm saying. That means yeah. we write a check to somebody, they don't cash it. I mean, there's no checks that we're holding for 90 days that we're not cashing. Correct. There's, okay. Okay, that's what I meant. All right. Yeah. So this, I was going to say, why do we have to investigate something that we're holding? Either cash it or don't cash. But it's okay. So we can't balance the books. Right. Okay. Just. This all makes sense. Did anybody read it through? Yeah. yeah. I, read it. I mean, I'm assuming this was written in conjunction. The tax collector has looked at this as well, and the finance director. Both have. Both, and, and you uh, have, are obviously. In, in agreement. Okay. Yep. The sample policy came from our auditor from another community. Um, it's been recommended by our auditor the last two audits. So okay. this is well, this makes sense. Take care of a management letter yep. comment. Those unexpended funds, do they end up rolling over into free cash, or can they be expended for another purpose within that category? No, they'd be closed out at the end of the year. Okay. Okay. This, is, this seems to be prudent policy. Yep. yep. And it goes along with um, you're required to accept uh, Mass General Law 200... 200A. 200A. Chapter 200A, Section 9A. Yes which we did uh, October 30th, 2010. 
Uh, so we're in compliance there as well. Well, that would the board accepted or the town? The town, no, the town. Yeah, the know. town had to accept it, mm -hmm. which we did 12 years ago. Mm -hmm. Well, not 12 years ago. Yeah. 11 and a half years ago. <laughs> the auditors would like to see a written policy. We already yep. do this in practice. Mm -hmm. um, the treasurer collector has actually been going through a tailings procedure for the last two years. Cause it, um, so it's something we already do. It's just putting it in writing and okay. formalizing it. Mm -hmm. So because this is a draft, we'll just we'll leave it here and then just bring it back for a vote. Um, do you want to do it next week or do you want to do, wait two weeks after the town meeting? It doesn't matter. Do you have questions on? It's pretty straightforward, I thought. Yeah, yeah. That's straightforward. Well, I only want to hold it off because it says draft, so usually there's like a reading and then have, we can just bring it up one last time. It just seems appropriate to, that we don't bring something up, discuss it, and vote on it at the same meeting. Okay. That's all. So let's put it on next meeting and we can just approve it then. <clears throat> I mean, why? Do we have a stack of checks that uh, we're looking at? I just for? thought it was something simple that everyone's in agreement for and our auditors are recommending that we do so we'll just take care of it yeah well we will next week yeah. okay again I, only because it says draft so I, I like to have at least a couple of readings i'm not going to do the full school committee three readings but we can do at least two <laughs> so <clears throat> um, amend a one-day liquor license policy to include insurance requirement so Ooh. is the network back here Looks like it. Policies. Liquor license. All right, there we go. So where did we look to? Is it in here to be amended, or we? This is just no, what just it the is. existing okay. one is in there. So. So we want to change, add a criteria for approval, or yes, that acceptance they have, of conditions. Um, insurance. So mm -hmm. that would be, so two or, uh, criteria for approval or conditions to be contained in the license. So probably conditions, I'm assuming. No, I think it would be um, the criteria for approval. So they would need insurance in order to May I, may I ask what prompted this, how this came about? I think it's a requirement um, it's for any liquor. So it's just, um, it was on the action item list as well that we look at adding insurance for one day as well. It would mirror liquor license obligations. Well. I guess I'm asking, does the state require this or they recommend it? No, the um the basically the body approving licenses puts these regulations together we send any approvals to the abcc and one day liquor licenses are only when liquor is for sale correct i'm just trying to think about we haven't had a one day liquor license because no one has done anything for two years so we haven't i can't recall I just want to see if the, if the entities smokehouse. that have come before us, well, Smokehouse would be, would, wouldn't apply to this because it would be, they already have insurance as a restaurant. I'm wondering if there are entities that come to us for one time, liquor, one day liquor licenses that wouldn't have access to insurance. So it would be prohibited for them to do this. And I don't know that there are any, but it would be interesting to know if we, who has asked for one day liquor licenses. Even a nonprofit would, you would think would need the insurance requirement for to have an event that has liquor being sold at it. Yeah, I mean, in principle, I'm not against it. I just want to make sure that. I guess if we're asking for insurance, I would like to see in the policy what the minimum insurance limits would be and, and what we would expect of something that, I mean, might be, you know, for parties of, you know, a certain size, you'd have to meet these insurance limits. If it was a huge event, 500 people or so, you know, maybe it, it, are there tiers to it, things like that. I, 
I, I think we need a little more definition than just say get an insurance policy. I, I, I think we'd want to provide some guidance to, to folks who, who want to comply with the policy of, of what they should do and, and you know, give them some direction and, and um, resources that they can reach out to for, for the sorts of, these sorts of things. Do we have any sample language or do you have any sample language? No, I do not okay. tonight. So I've, I've been in the situation where I've managed some property that would occasionally get one day liquor licenses mm -hmm. and who, and who was applying this is for in it. Cambridge, who was applying for it? This would be really any organization that wanted to have a, but an organization, yeah, an organ, a nonprofit organizations. Yeah. Um, and, and so there were a couple of one day liquor licenses that were required. And as I, as I recall that process, I don't think even in Cambridge, I don't think the, that there was an insurance requirement. And, but I'll look into that. Yeah, like I said, I, I, don't, I personally don't have any problem thinking that there, there would be a decent idea to have one. I'm not married to it. I mean, it would be interesting to see what other people are doing and, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my only concern is if it's prohibitive. If, if, you know, an insurance company says, wait a minute, you want me to insure you for one day, none of your people do this for a living, and then it becomes some absorbent cost, then it, to me it kind of defeats the purpose of having it. Is it possible for Elaine to look back like the last five years and see what one day liquor licenses we've given? Because I can't believe there'd be that many anyway. Yes, yep. Uh, I know, I'd just like to know who asked for them. And, and what would what, and what would be the cause? Well, what would be as long as the town may be part of the policy, and I'm just I'm just spitballing here, so I'm just having an open yeah. discussion. You know, maybe we have a part of the policy that the, the the applicant is fully liable, and the town holds no liability for the distribution if you follow these things. If you people you have certified people and ever everything, you know that would cover the town too. I just don't want the town to be held liable. Yeah, I mean you can. I just went online last night and uh, right now and Googled and a bunch of different towns have insurance requirements. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, all right. So is this something that we would discuss next week to figure out kind of what those limits should be? Yeah, we should come up with sample, you know, I would ask the board to look, look at it and think about it and let's come back with something that's, you know, sample word verbiage to put in there. I know, um, okay. We have a, since we're heading into town meeting, um, I'm okay if we do this ourselves, like as members instead of. That's why I just, I just asked the members. I don't okay. want to put anything on the town manager because that's between now and next Saturday is going to be crazy. <clears throat> okay, so we come back to that. <clears throat> okay. Review the sign policy, signs at polling places during elections. Okay. Well, don't we, aren't there state laws that govern this? Uh, 150 feet from the polling location is the state law. Okay. But our policy doesn't allow for this at all right now. Oh, oh, this is the these are ah these are yeah. people posting on. You're talking about the people who who would put it on the front of the, the entrance way. Right. Okay. Yes. Now I remember that coming up. Um. So when people historically have put, vote for somebody, you know, and blanketed Mass Ave. So people coming into the polling place see them. That does not fit the signage on town property policy. Uh, well, how would we word this? Wow. So, so I'm understanding. We're looking. So e either, 
just to clarify what the, what's in question. So, at any election, town election or any any voting of any kind in the town, it has been accepted practice that we allow people to you know put their lawn signs along Mass Ave as they come into the TC Passios. Mm -hmm. uh, less so because they, uh, from the Oak Ave side because that entrance is relatively new and nobody really stands over there and more people come in from Mass Ave than from the back side, although people come in from the back side. Yeah. With this current policy of town, the signage on town property, that really is not allowed because it's not in here. All right. So either we're going to disallow the whole thing which seems ridiculous. I don't, I, don't know if, I don't know if ridiculous is the word I would use, but it seems counterintuitive or counterproductive. But we should put in another number in here that, that basically details what is allowed and how far and where. Yep. Well, okay. I'll start writing it, a draft, because I think it's straightforward. Uh, we want to, well, I think we should probably get this done before the town election. Yep. Again, it's not a contested one, so I don't think there's going to be tons of lawn signs anyway, but it would be nice to have it. So if we can think about what that verbiage would be, something like within, you know, within X amount of place off the street, you know, off the curb, and for this amount of distance from either entrance to the polling place, like those are the places you would allow it that would be an example I mean is this some of the ideas that you kind of envisioned or did you have any particular no I just think certain paragraphs are going to need to be modified because it's saying where signs are allowed yeah I think there's going to be a number that's going to have to do specifically with elections with election signs yeah Election signs, actually election signs on election day. Yeah. So it's not even, you know, none of them are allowed on town property. No election signs are allowed on town property mm -hmm. except for election day. Yeah. And that's only at the polling place and only in these strips, we can yeah. say. Yeah, I can work on that wording because that was where my mind was going was election days and specifically yep. time windows around that. And we already know the locations where we tend to do it at. And so I think I can... I can work with some verbiage that would allow what we've been doing to continue, but make sure that you know all those stuff is all those signs are cleaned up yep. for the next morning. So. I mean, when I read this policy, it doesn't read to me like this is addressing election signs at all. No, no, this, this exactly. Is, this is just just events, mm -hmm. right? But it does. But because we have this policy of signage on town pol on town property, right? The existing putting those signs on town property is not allowed, so therefore everything else is disallowed. That means you need, per you need permission, according to this policy, you need permission to put any signs on town property. Yeah. So we need, to make it, we need to carve out an exception for election signs of a certain size. Yeah. You know. And as, as, I, as I just looked up, because I was thinking about particularly the parcel of, is it town Technically, I mean, I know all of it's town, but is it us or is that the school um, where a lot of that happens at? Can we create a policy that would govern that area or would that fall underneath the town's right of way? Because we own that sidewalk. And, you know. Yeah, I would say it's the town's right of way. All right. So we got to. That's what I'm saying. We'd have to yeah, say it's a certain right distance away. off the curb. So, so to me, I think crafting a policy for the election signs is is. providing a solution to a problem we don't have. And I think it's gonna invite some unintended consequences. For example, um, if you have a number of contested elections, you know, and what if, are you gonna limit each candidate to only a certain number of signs, three or four signs or six signs or whatever that number is. And, or, I mean, some people may wanna spend a lot of money on, have their election campaigns spend a lot of money on signs so they want to put you know 40 signs on there are we going to allow that i mean it it gets you know and then if we're stifling that or you know is i i, I think a policy may create a lot of 
difficulty for us. When I don't know that we've had much trouble um, other than saying election day signs may be placed on town property on election day and must comply with all state laws or something simple. Yeah. Make it very broad as opposed to something, you know. Well, we just don't want them going too far. I mean, you're, you're, the fact that, I mean, we could even say that they're, the placements are on a first serve, for, you know, first come, first serve basis. So there's like, you know, if you, somebody wants to buy 600 signs and blanket the whole thing with 600 signs, go to right. it. That's fine. It's one day, and I, well, I, the town doesn't take a responsibility to do it. But that, that's not going to in, in While it's possible, it's not going to happen because it never happened that anybody knows of in the last you know, 30 years, 40 years. So you know, I, I don't see, I understand your point in the potential of it happening. But by not enforcing our own thing and saying we could just say, hey, listen, no signs here at all would be kind of counter getting people involved and enthused at election sure. day. So, and, and, yeah. And I, I, you know, there's, there's currently one, I mean, I know that we, we have to be really, it, we don't have the ability to regulate too much content because of we're a government and we have free speech. Right. So it does get tricky. Um, I see where you're coming from though, which is basically saying like maybe doing nothing is the best approach that, or a broad, really broad policy. But maybe we may need to phrase this and have a really broad kind of recommendation, but also do it, you know, send it to the school community and ask them to confirm as well. That way there's no daylight between what we're saying and what they're agreeing to, so that way we don't have any issues come election day, because all of it happens in, for the most part, school property. So. Yeah, we just gotta say when you can put them up. I mean, again, what we have to do is carve out a, a, at least a part that says it's allowed. And we can limit it to whatever sparse uh, requirements we need, like we could just say, oh, yeah, you can't put them up before 12 midnight of, of, of election day, and they have to be out no more than two hours after the polls close. Yep. That's it. Those, like, that's when they have to be gone. I mean, and then we could just say, and this is the distance, this is the, the avenue that you could put them in. You know, for 500 feet in either direction, that's town property. Yeah. You know, anybody who has 500 feet away on, you know, private property, they can put up the signs whenever they want. There have there has been some stink raised in the past about why it's permitted, and I, I have heard that about why are all these signs allowed on town property. So I, I think I do recall a couple of years back, not that it was a big deal, but that it was a minor deal that someone mm -hmm. raised because you know how elections get. Well, they raised it because yeah. we adopted this policy that we're yeah. looking at because they're like oh, I thought these weren't allowed. I mean, an alternative could be you don't allow any signs to be planted on town property, but you can have an unlimited number of volunteers holding signs uh, you know, on. Yeah, on I, well, I think that's the thing like we that. don't even, yeah. yeah. I mean. The question is, do we, I mean, I, it's an open discussion, so right. I don't know. I, I personally don't mind the little bit of fanfare that day that advertising who's running for what, whether it's local or whether it's a state office or whether it's national office. I. I guess my big concern is is if we craft a policy that's too narrow and someone says, you know, it's a first come, first serve basis, but the person who, the candidate who comes in, uh, uh, she or he may, you know, know someone and get, you know, 50 slots for signs uh, before, because they were the first come, they said, I want all the slime sign slots. And yeah, is, that a that. Tacit, is that a tacit <laughs> endorsement by the town? Because, you know, it, it could look like there's a conflict that they know someone in town, they get the permit first and, and that sort of thing. And, you know, that, that's what I, that's what I worry about. Well, this, first of all, as far as the tacit approval or support of a, a, uh, of a, a, a candidate, I don't see how that would amount to that. If there's a policy that says they can do that, you know, ever since I've been involved in town, that's what people would do at four and the five in the morning. If you, depending on how contested right. it was, people would go and they'd put all their signs and all their signs this way. Mm -hmm. And you know, Dave knows, <laughs> and that's what you did. And if you could block the people out, that's, that's part of the quote gamesmanship. Whatever. Right. 
Well, and, and that's part of the reason why I think, you know, sometimes no policy is better than a policy. Well, we just have to allow them. Like I said, we just right. have to say on election day, you can put them there and where you can put them. And we're not going to make sure. any other rules just so somebody can say, well, your own policy doesn't even say you're allowed. And we're going to say, no, you can't allow them yep. on this day, only on this day and only in these areas. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I agree. Okay. I can work on something. All right. meeting. Michael is going to work. Mr. Passios, we're, encur we're encouraging <coughs> volunteerism today. Uh, Dave Passios, 56 Whiting Street again. Uh, and yes, uh, the political process on uh, election day is rather interesting. You run around town, gather up all your signs from all over town, you put them all in front of the school. <laughs> it has um, a robust history in the <laughs> It sure does. Um, I just did a quick uh, search uh, in my computer just to give you uh, what the town of Yarmouth states, and it's very simple. Please be aware that no signs are allowed on public property with the single exception of polling locations with 100 feet setbacks on election day. Then it goes on to mention uh, a couple of things in their zoning bylaws for signs in general in town. Yep, thank Thanks. you. Yeah, that's what I okay. think is a good thing to have more. Just, be, just so somebody can say, your own policy doesn't allow it. Like it does allow it and it's pretty open. So. Yep, yep. All right. Okay, approval of minutes from March 15th of this year. Anybody have any questions about those minutes or any amendments then I would entertain a motion regarding the minutes of March 15th I move to approve the minutes of March 15th 2022 as presented second any further discussion all those in favor please say aye aye aye, aye. aye. opposed none so we've approved the minutes of the Ides of March all right <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ratification of the annual town election warrant. Well, I think we've already done that, right? You haven't ratified it. Oh, we haven't ratified it. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. We've all signed it. So I would entertain a motion of the we ratify the annual town election warrant. So moved. Second. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. None. Slow on the take there, Mr. Franco. All right, so warrants. Accounts payable in the amount of $615,652.25. Uh, I, I hate to do this, but can I bring up a point of order on that last vote? Yes. Uh, I, I, I believe you the way you, what we, the, you said we're ratifying the annual town election warrant. What we're really ratifying is the signing that we did mm -hmm. after the fact. So, but we didn't say that when we just okay. took the vote. Okay, take that back. <laughs> I would entertain a motion on the ratification of the annual town election warrant signing by the select board. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor, aye. say aye. 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 That's, why I, that's why I had the hesitation before on <laughs> voting. Okay. Deduction warrant in the amount of $202,455.76. Last but not least, payroll in the amount of $845,815.21. cents. Action items. The only action item, I don't, I don't, there's no really no, I don't know if it really belongs under action items, but everybody should be making their appointment to meet with the town manager regarding the evaluations um, and then get them to me. I, I don't have the deadline in front of me, but get them to me so that I don't have to do this on the last day that we need to do it. We want to we want to have two meetings. Remember, the draft should be presented on the second to last meeting before the election, and then should be any amendments or any modifications or amendments should be uh, available for the next week where we ratify it and accept it, because then there'll be a town election and then there's could be new membership and 
So we want to get that done, and I just want to have enough time for me to write this. If people can present it and provide it to me digitally, as not a scan of, so not that digitally. No, no, and just like I did it last year, scanned it. Yeah, so just because it makes it easier when I do composites, if somebody has phrased something that I just want to cut and paste instead of me typing it in, I know it enhances my typing skills, <laughs> but I'd rather not. <laughs> So is anybody, Lou, are you clear on this? Um, like what you have to do? Not, not entirely, no. Well, you I, can call me. Okay, and I will yeah. go over the process. Yes, which, I, mean, I would like that. probably call any of us, but feel free to call yeah. me. And uh, I'll tell you how to fill it out. Thank you. That you've was, done it before. Mm -hmm. You've definitely done it before. I was going to raise it. You beat me to it. Thank okay. you. Yeah, 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 I do need some guidance. Yep, no problem. And you have distributed yours already? Yes, yep. last yeah. week. Yeah, I, mm -hmm. I thought so. Mm -hmm. I just verified. Mm -hmm. It's Thursday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. While on vacation, I want the record to show. The town manager submitted. Okay. Any other action items? No. Any committee reports? Mr. Dwyer. Uh, yes, I attended a meeting of the Stormwater Task Force last Thursday. Um, the primary focus of the meeting was uh, a meeting with uh, Nick uh, Cristofori uh, of CEI. They're our stormwater consultant. And we went over um, the MS4 uh, permit um, review for the last year. Okay. What does the budgeting look like for that, by the way? I mean, because all along the years, it's like, oh, this is going to hit. It's going to be real expensive. And I don't know where we are. So we don't have a, a very clear understanding of where the, the town's efforts in terms of compliance with the MS4 permit is is expended. So we don't track, so for example, DPW staff would go and, and clean a, a storm drain or something like that. We don't track that time separately to say, hey, this is a stormwater task and it should go, go into that. That's one of the things that we're gonna start to work with with the DPW director before he resigned. So we never really got to that step. So that's something that over the next year, we're really gonna wanna try and make a push because until we understand how our stormwater dollars are spent, it hard it's hard for us to ask the town in the future to say, hey, you know, we, we need some additional dollars for stormwater because, you know, without knowing that information. So that's something that we really have to work towards. And eventually there wants to be like a, a stormwater enterprise fund, but we need this information uh, uh, before we can really, you know, get to that point. And just uh, to clarify about the catch basin cleaning or thing, that is documented I'll document what we are part of the MS4 requirements, though. So, and, and best management practices that we're required to do as far as what we submit for the permit. Um, our budget in the in a line item budget is 100,004, but it's primarily for consulting all these tasks that are associated with the MS4 requirements each year. Well, and and just to give a little characterization, so CEI it helps us uh, uh, administer the permit or, or meet, meet the permit requirements for MS4. And, and their characterization of, of how we do compared to other towns, they say Lunenburg does a, a very good job dealing with all these requirements of, of clean catch basins and all the different things, locating all our outfalls and things like that. They, we, we do a, a very good job of that, but you know, there's always things that we can do better and, and we, we can dive a little deeper because we only think these requirements are gonna get more strict in the future. Yeah. So, yep. Excellent. Thank you. Mr. Franco, any committee report? No, none for anything that was attended, but I'm just put, make a note, uh, announcement that there'll be a school committee meeting tomorrow night at 6, which I will attend. No. Mr. Jeffries. And again, the only comment I had is that the finance committee meeting, which is the last meeting, is it your last meeting before town meeting? Yep. Mm -hmm. You're not having one next Thursday. No. Right. Okay. So this is the last meeting and capital planning will, the capital planning question that I brought up earlier will be discussed and they'll be reviewing some other uh, articles that they have not taken votes on. They are a handful, they're not many. So that is Thursday at seven. Is it here or is, okay, it is here and, and, and Zoom. So it's hybrid. Okay. Economic development. 
committee. Their survey is up on the website now. So if anyone wants to fill that out, is now live on the, the website. Excellent. Yeah, should have mentioned that. Thank, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, upcoming meeting. So again, we have a meeting May 3rd on next Tuesday. Then we have the annual town meeting May 7th, and we're back in regular session May 10th. Uh, and take the meetings from there. Any final public comment from the public? Dave Passios, 56 Wedding Street. Again, uh, this is an unsolicited public announcement, uh, partially because I am on the Parks Commission. Uh, nothing rings in spring in this town uh, better than opening day for Little League. Uh, they actually sent us a, an email to the Parks Commission earlier today uh, asking for a couple of things that need to be adjusted for uh, their parade uh, arriving at the park and so on and so forth. I don't have the particulars on the route, but it always used to be down Main Street, Highland Street to Chestnut Street. Um, I'll just read this very quickly. It's one, one or two sentences I'm writing to inform, inform you that our annual parade and opening ceremonies for the Lunenburg Little League will be held this Saturday, uh, April 30th, 2022. And then they ask for a couple of things that need to be adjusted, uh, gates opening, so on and so forth. Um, I just bring it up as an opportunity for the public to um, ask or ask the public to take a, a good hard look at Marshall Park. It's our gem of a park as far as parks is concerned. It's 28 acres uh, from the open field areas. That's only a portion of the park. And uh, over the next few years, we will be developing uh, more uses there, encompassing more of the park, and renovating a couple of the fields. So uh, a lot of great things are going to be happening there, and I encourage everybody to come out. It looks like the weather is going to be a typical opening day type uh, weather, cool in the morning and uh, sunshine for the rest of the day. One other quick note, uh, just so that this board is aware, the uh, skate park group relocated their sign this Sunday from the Passios property to the entrance off of Route 2A for Marshall Park. So they have officially moved it over there. They took care of, uh, checked with state on setbacks and everything. So the sign is there. Excellent. Thank, Thank you, you very much. So what, what time is the parade, by the way? Does it they didn't give me a time. time? Okay. I believe it used to be <coughs> noon, but okay. I'm not sure. OK. Thank you. Any other public comment from the public? Any public comment from the board? No. None. No. Having completed our agenda, I would entertain a mo motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Good night, everyone. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. See you next Tuesday. Bye bye. Recording stopped. What? That was recorded? <laughs> that was fast. Off air 